Would you join me in prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Where did life come from? Where did the animals come from? Why is the world so full of life everywhere all the time? Well, that is the story of creation in the Bible. And in the Christian faith, it is really two stories, two separate stories written at very different times that do not make sense put together. And though it is a bit vexsome to modern sensibilities that these stories do not match up, in the sensibility of the ancient world, you would never settle for one story when two stories is twice as good. <laughs> the first story of creation, it is cosmic and grand with God, something like a, like a monarch pronouncing from just out of view. God speaks and the order of things springs into being. The light as well as the stars that make up the light. The dark as well as the deep places that make up the holy darkness. The ocean with its waves and its mysterious sea monsters, the land and its multitude of life that creeps and crawls and leaps and runs and walks, and last of all, human beings, made last of all and made in the image of God, whatever that means. Now, as a human being, I find it easy to look at this story and say, well, since we were the last of everything, then all of that other stuff must simply be prologue to my august presence. <laughs> I, who am made in God's image, I must be the best. But best in what way? Of course, I am not swifter than the light. I am not more glorious than the sun. I do not have greater constancy than the stars. God made these things and said of them, it is good. That is, it is a blessing. It is a divine benediction in an almost tautological sense. Benediction literally meaning just to say that something is good, to declare that it is good. So for God to say, it is good, that means it is blessed. The light receives its blessing on its own. The light does not owe the meaning of its existence to me. The light does not owe its blessing to me. The light is good all on its own and worthy to be blessed, and God has blessed it. And it's not just the light either that's blessed in this first story, because in the first creation story, God creates the animals too on their own. Before humans are ever made, the animals are not made to be companions to keep the people company as is in the second creation story. In the first creation story, the animals are made on their own for their own reasons. God creates the animals, those that walk on the earth and swim in the ocean and fly in the sky. All of the animals hop to and come into being at the sound of God's voice, everything in its place, and God declares of the animals, they are good. They are good. They are all very good. And again, this is a divine benediction, a divine blessing for the animals, all their own, that does not require the presence of humanity for it to come into effect. Yes, humanity is created last. And yes, we are created in the image of God, but that doesn't mean that I am the best. I'm not as agile as the cats. I am not as loyal as the bees. I am not as indispensable as the earthworms. I'm not immortal like the jellyfish. Oh, you didn't know about that? You didn't know about the immortality of jellyfish? You must be thinking, I feel like I would have heard of that. I feel like there would, I, would have, I would have known about that. What's that animal even called? Its name is the immortal jellyfish. If human beings, then, we aren't the best of all animals, then what is our place? If we are made in the image of God, what is that supposed to mean? If it isn't to just be the best and lord it over all of everything and pretend like it's all about us, what does it mean to be made in the image of God? Well, it means that we are supposed to resemble God. And in this first story of creation, what is God doing? God is blessing. 
God is blessing the creation. God is speaking a good word over all of what has been created. God is seeing what has been made and seeing that it is good and blessing it all. That is what God is doing. If we are to be like God, then we too are to be a blessing to the animals, a blessing to all of creation. The story of creation from the book of Genesis, it is so full of light and truth and joy. What a treasure it is. What a treasure it is. It lends to us all of the credence that we need for the tradition of blessing of the animals. Our delight in our pets, this mirrors the delight that God showed in creation. God declared of the animals, they are good. And in our love for the animals in our life, we affirm what God has said. We say out loud what has been written down, that God has declared of these creatures, they are good. To think of the animals that have blessed my family. Immediately bounding into my memory comes Joshua, the dog the size of a small pony. And Grundoon, the calico, who loved only one person in all the world, and it was not me. (laughs) And Grundoon's kitten, Doris, who loved all people equally because I don't think that she could tell us apart. (laughs) I think of Tata, the purebred Siamese, who somehow wound up a stray in New Mexico. Her kitten, Dodge, who loved no food better than shoelaces. I think of Ralph the Basset Hound, whose nose saw an invisible world coiling about our feet. Truffle the cat, prone to sneezing, and with the sweetest disposition and the most alarming meow. I remember them all and bless them because they are a blessing from God. I remember these things. I remember these things trusting the Creator who called us into being trusting in Jesus, our great high shepherd, and trusting in the Holy Spirit who broods over us like a hen over her chicks. Thanks be to God for this beautiful world and all that live in it. Amen.